News as it happens from the University of Calgary, U of C. This is now. In Alberta, historically, we found less than one bat per turbine per year, very low numbers. And then there was a new site built, a new facility built, and in 2005, large numbers of bats were found at that turbine. I believe the estimate was 18 bats per turbine at that facility. And the owners and operators of that facility then contacted us and said, something new is happening, something strange is happening, something that's never happened in Canada or Alberta is happening. Could you please help us? And then that's where we got involved. And this is the start of my master's program, which I did, then did in 2006 and 2007, where I went out to that high fatality site and tried to determine some of the causes and some of the patterns and variations in some of that fatality. We went out to wind energy sites in southwestern Alberta, and we walked around the turbines looking for bat carcasses. And in 2006, what I noticed was a large number of the bat carcasses we found had no injuries. They didn't look like anything had happened to them. They were laying on the ground, no broken wings, no other sorts of injuries you'd expect if they were struck by these large blades. So these blades are each one 40 meters long, and the tips of them can move 250 kilometers an hour. So something very large, very fast, you'd expect these relatively small animals to look rather beat up if they were struck. But we weren't finding that at all. So in 2007, I hired Brandon Klug, who has a history of dis dissections, has a mass uh, degree in zoology, and we started looking internally at these bats, bats that had no external injuries, cutting them up and looking at, to see what was happening inside. And what we found was that a large proportion of these bats um, internally had severe hemorrhaging, so they were full of blood inside, which is not normal. So we took that a little farther, and we sent it to a veterinary pathologist, Genevieve Demors, and she found the same things that we had seen, that the blood vessels in the lungs had actually burst, and the lungs were filling full of fluid, filling full of blood. And that all those are injuries consistent with barotrauma or with um, flying through an area where the pressure drops dramatically. And what happens then is basically the lungs overexpand and it causes breakages in all the small blood vessels around the lungs. And so essentially the bats are dying from drowning. Their lungs are full of fluid and full of blood and they can no longer breathe. Nobody expected bats with the amazing echolocation ability and their ability to see these structures, nobody expected them to fly well, either A, near turbines, and then be killed by turbines. We didn't expect it. So that was a surprise to researchers and industry alike. And then to discover that they're not being struck, nor are they cladding with the blades, and they're actually dying from this internal injury, that again was a big surprise to us. Besides the fact that bats are just fantastic, they're the only mammal that flies, they perform very important roles in the ecosystem. Because these bats are migratory and they migrate from Canada potentially to Mexico, what happens to bats in Canada can have implications for ecosystems in Mexico or the southern United States, for example. So this really is a bigger issue than just some bats dying at turbines in Alberta. This potentially has um, impacts on North American ecosystems.